Hey there, Miranda Wilson here with another fun lesson idea from Science Journal for Kids. Today, we're going to focus on an activity modeling DNA and exploring how mutations or differences in the sequence can result in different phenotypes or how an organism looks. This is an activity from Teach Engineering and is intended for middle school students. Before you start the activity, it would be helpful for students to understand the four nucleotides that make up DNA and the base pairing rules. They should also understand the double helix structure of DNA. From there, it's up to you how much you want to tell your students. The only materials you'll need are toothpicks, gumdrops, and plates to put their DNA creations on so your classroom doesn't get all sugary. You'll want to print out the color key so your students know which color gumdrops represent which nucleotide and which combination of nucleotides represent which traits. There are three different color keys so that you don't run out of gumdrops. You'll also want to print out the DNA identity cards so they know what traits they're trying to create with their models. Teach Engineering has a fun story for you to set up the activity. Your students are detectives trying to decipher DNA material and then match that with the suspect's physical characteristics. Feel free to give groups or pairs multiple DNA identity cards if you want to give them extra practice. Once the groups are done with their builds, you can have them exchange their sequences with other groups and work backwards to figure out which suspects their classmates made. You could even make it a competition to see who can get the right identity the fastest. We have a couple of suggestions to help the activity run more smoothly. One. If you're worried about your gumdrop supply, make sure to have students trade colors of gumdrops. Two, when the students exchange DNA sequences, make sure the orientation of the strand or which end they started from is clear to the group. Also make sure that the color key the group used is shared as well. And three, there are some great questions that come along with the activity, but you'll wanna copy and paste them into another document for your students. You probably don't want to share the website with your students because the answers to the questions are embedded. The activity also has several suggestions for extensions, like having your students research genetic disorders or genetically modified organisms. If you want a more ecological take on DNA, we highly recommend taking a look at one of our adapted articles titled, How Can We Track Life in the Ocean? Researchers used environmental DNA to figure out what animals could be found off the coast of California and when they were most abundant. The article discusses how the researchers used conserve regions of DNA to identify what types of organisms there were, for instance, whether it was a mammal or a crustacean. They then used variable regions of DNA to identify the species. The article even has an explanatory figure that will help your students understand the concept of conserved and variable sections of DNA. This is a great example of how researchers can use DNA to help assess biodiversity and natural habitats. Don't forget to take a look at our videos at the bottom of the article page when you're planning your class time. There's always a video meant to introduce the topic of the article to your students. For each adapted article, we also provide an audio version of the article being read for those students who might need some extra help with their reading skills. You can access our audio versions on the webpage for each adapted article or on the Science Journal for Kids YouTube channel. That's all for today. If you'd like more teaching tips and ideas for lesson planning, please check out the audio or video versions of our Lesson Ideas podcast. Also, make sure to check out our Ask a Scientist videos for short interviews with some of our researchers. You can find them on our YouTube channel. If you have questions or comments, please share them in the feedback form on our website, or head to Facebook to join our official community group. You can also sign up for our free monthly newsletter to learn about our latest content. And as always, please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.